Let's put a visual to some of those traditional publishing techniques or processes that would have to be done by hand. That's what I want to emphasize about traditional publishing. Things were done by hand. We did not have computers. Um, let's put a visual to those so you can kind of get an idea. For those of you who have taken Art 1135 Printing Fundamentals, these sheets on the right may look familiar to you. They're called masking sheets and they are light blocking, which means that light cannot get through them. And when you would create film and you would use that film to uh, expose and create printing plates, um, the idea is that any area on the printing plate that is exposed to light will become hardened. There's a, something called emulsion, it's light sensitive sitting on the surface of it. And anything that does not get hardened could then be washed away and that it will leave your active image area. And so these masking sheets would be used to block out areas where you just definitely knew that you didn't want to have any light go through. And if you look at the top example on the right hand side, um, this is a film, piece of film up here, that is going to be used to expose a printing plate. And we used photography to capture the layout, took a picture of it, and we exposed it and created a film negative. And then when we create the negative, um, we can use that to create a positive. And there's a whole process to that that I'm not going to get into. But long story short, I have this active image area up here that I would like to expose to a printing plate. But I also have this big area beneath it, or you can see the yellow paper, that there's no active image area. And I definitely do not want to see light go through there. And with film, you could have like pinholes of light that would come through. And when you get a pinhole of light that goes through and exposes, you'll have like a little tiny dot somewhere on your sheet where it printed and you don't want it to print. And so we can use these masking sheets to block out big areas of the printing plate that we just definitely know that we don't want uh, light to hit the printing plate. And then it allows us to narrow down the area that we do want. And so one of the techniques that we would do by hand that is now done really easily in Photoshop is this idea of masking, right? Beneath the yellow paper, it's called masking paper, um, masking sheets, uh, there is still film. And I don't want to cut the film. I want the film to stay whatever size that the film was. Maybe there's additional content below it that I just don't want to see right now, but I'd like to use in the future. Uh, masks allowed for that non-destructive editing. I just put a big sheet of paper over what I don't want to see, but as soon as I'm done, I could kind of rip that yellow paper off of the film, and then I would still have the film. And so now we do that in Photoshop, and we can do it in 10 seconds. We can hit the layer mask button, we have a layer mask, and then anything we paint black on the layer mask would disappear, and anything that we leave white would remain visible, but it's fully editable. And so that technique, it wasn't made for Photoshop, it was generated based on this principle of masking that was used in traditional publishing. Some other things that happened in traditional publishing um, that we don't really have to do a lot today is photo editing by hand. And so we would use photo editing to create photos to use in our project, to edit the photos or manipulate the photos um, that we would use in the project, but we also use photos to create the film and to expose printing plates. And so the whole printing process is basically um, based on photo editing. I want to talk about the idea of saying that you want variations or you want to make changes to an image that you already have. And so in today, in 10 seconds in Photoshop, I can try and I can crop an image if I don't like it. And I could say, I don't like the composition of the image, I'm going to crop it. And if I don't like it, I can just hit undo and I can redo it. And so if I wanted to try 35 variations, I could do that in 10 minutes if I'm fast, right? But in traditional publishing, everything had to be done by hand. And so if you wanted to crop an image, you had to take it into the dark room and you had to set up your exposure unit so that you're cropping the image the way that you wanted. Then once you exposed the film, or sorry, the photo paper, you had to develop the photo paper, which is a multi-step process, and then you had to let it dry, and then you had to take it outside of the dark room and take a look at it and decide, well, is that the way I wanted it to crop? And so in my first example, I said that I could crop something in 10 seconds in Photoshop, but if I didn't like it, I could do it like 35 times in 10 minutes, right? But if I was cropping it manually in a dark room using uh, traditional photography techniques, it could take up to 30 minutes just to crop one of the images. And then if I end up not liking it, I'd have to redo it over and over again. And so um, when you have to do things manually by hand, things take longer. Um, you don't have as much control over the final output. Um, you don't have as much control in the sense that you can try lots of options over and over again. And so it was a long time consuming process to create um, printed things using traditional publishing. 
And so the last type of thing that I want to talk about is the idea of, of editing and creating multiple variations of something. So we just talked about creating everything with film, and the example that I use is cropping, right? And so the, the image up here on the top right hand side, it's an image of some flowers. It's got like trash on the ground, and I decided that maybe I don't like that. Very quickly in Photoshop, I could crop it and try different variations until I get the, the version that I like, like on the right hand side here. But if I took it into the dark room and I made those changes and I didn't like the way it is, or it was blurry because I wasn't paying attention to my exposure and I hit the paper or something and it moved, I'd have to do that over and over again. And the same thing happens if you want to do any type of editing that you would think that we would do in Photoshop uh, in current day. So if I wanted to mess around with the colors of the image, if I wanted to create a duotone, or if I wanted to create a sepia tone image, or if I wanted to change the colors in the image, like in this uh, umbrella here, um, it wasn't something that I could just try different variations of very quickly over and over again. You would have to manually do it with film in a dark room um, until you got the the colors and the the cropping that you wanted. Now there were ways to change the color without going in the dark room. You could kind of paint right over an image, um, but the quality compared to what you have today by changing the color of the image and painting over an image is not comparable.